Hi guys, it's me, Max, and today we are going to talk about one of the things that I'm passionate about, and that is college. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not exactly passionate about college, but I am passionate about uh, learning, and I'm passionate about helping others too. And a lot of people have actually commented on my last two videos about, you know, college in general, and a lot of people would ask me, how is college like? How are you able to do this? How are blah, blah, blah. So, I've kind of like collated a list of practical college tips. Disclaimer, this I'm not claiming to be an expert. I'm not claiming to be anything at all. These are just um, certain tips that I've learned through some experiences and through the experiences of my classmates. So, if you're you know willing and open-minded about it then go ahead and watch so let's start with our practical college tips first you have to choose your seats wisely so normally when you go inside class if it's like a new semester or if it's like the first day of class empty pa na ang classroom so ka sa classroom empty i always make sure that I am seated either at the second or at the third row. Why? Because I have this theory in my head na first row, muna silang kanang mga super super note taker, super kanang nanning, super kanang mga, you know, they're really into the lecture. And, and that's good. That's really, really good. But, you know, there's a certain pressure that you get when you're on the first row. It's like, Number one, you cannot tago your sleepiness. Number two, you cannot tago checking your phone. You, you can't do that when you're in the first row. You have to be dedicated to the lecture. And I'm personally not that kind of person. So I really don't like sitting in the first row. Now the second and the third row, that's where you can still actively engage in the lecture. You can still listen to the professor. But at the same time, it gives you that just, you know, it gives you that right amount of space to just space out for a while so whenever you feel like you're sleepy you can close your eyes for a while you can like nap for a while you can you can do that and you're not as kita or you're not as claro compared to those on the front row now if na said a third fourth or fifth row it's very tricky because you're far from the lecture and being far from the lecture it really gives so much space for distractions and mostly you will find yourself browsing through your phones you'll find yourself checking your social media picture picture ng slides and honestly that's really not not helpful for me so i just keep a i keep a good balance between being in the lecture and also giving space for me to space out or zone out. So yeah, choose your seats wisely if well I seating arrangement. Pero if nice seating arrangement ang teacher, then you gotta respect it. But if wala, I would really advise second or third row. So second tip is read through your course outline. So normally teachers would give out a course outline at the beginning or in the first day of your meeting. You read through it right away and don't throw that thing. Don't throw that thing because your course outline will have the schedule per week of the topics that you will discuss. So knowing what you will discuss in a certain week, you can actually already, I won't say study, but you can read or skim through in advance. Especially the first few lectures Now you can actually really kanang study in advance. That's really, really helpful. Plus, some course outlines also have the schedule of exams so you can plot that down in your calendar you can plot that down in your to-do list you can plot that down which brings me to my third tip the third tip is to get a planner or a reminders app now if you're very diligent go ahead and have a dedicated planner every time the teacher will yow yow something you write it down right away i'm not like that i'm usually just gonna ask my seatmate kung about the assignment or like what's happening you you know normally i'm just like that but 
it's important to have that discipline to even have a reminders app and it doesn't have to be fancy like i just use the built-in reminders apps on phone and then i'll just put like subject assignment blah 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 or the format right away very easy it will save you a lot of time when the teacher yow yows it jot it down right away because you will forget it if you say nga i'll remember that later who are you kidding so once the teacher will yow yow you jot it down right away it, it takes like five seconds to do that and it will help you later on once the task or once the workloads will pile up that's really gonna help you four is know your resources so as i said diba you cross-reference it with your course outline once you know na the resources kung unsa baning a book in sang author what edition how many books are needed in that subject you download it right away or you buy it right away and Usually, teachers man said will give like one week for you to prepare that resource material. So, use that time wisely. It doesn't matter if fancy ka na imo resource material, but if you are not on the same page with the teacher, literally, then you're gonna have a harder time sa exam. Of course, it's the same subject, it's the same lesson, but when it comes to exam taking, but the teachers man good will base it off from the book that they are using. So make sure that you share the same page with the teacher. Makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense, diba? I personally just use my iPad for most of my books. I just download it. So I know each course has Bible books and these Bible books are the books that you would use even when you practice your course. So it's really gonna be helpful. So in PT, we also have Bible books and those are the books that I invested in good. Even though mahal, even though tigwantri, even pag really mahal but it's it's an investment the fifth tip is listen in lectures so once you're in class since you're actually physically in class naman lang yun, make use na lang of your time be there be present and listen to your teacher because a lot of the questions that will come out sa exam so listen in lectures because when you're taking the exam and you're reading the questions like something in your brain just takes you back to the time na you're sitting down in that lecture and then you can hear the teacher's voice talk about it. You just have to know like the really important stuff and usually the really important stuff mauman ang yaw yaw sa mga teachers. So listen in lectures. So this next tip is really helpful for practical subjects or kanang laboratory subjects. It's record your lab classes and upload them on YouTube or in your Facebook group. Whatever it is, you record it. So if you're like microscope, picture na nimo, or even you know what's really helpful is video good. Because when you're studying, you can hear that classmate's voice ng hala, si uh, tingo good nini ate Eloisa, or tingo good nini Jail, or tingo good nini kinsa mahilig mo video. Basta kami tanan, we usually do and so when it's time to study they just we just watch the video. So we have we've done this for a lot of classes. We've done this for kinesiology, thera X, patient care, gross anatomy lab, um neuroanatomy lab. Oh my gosh, yeah, grabe kayo ang brains. Gina video gito na mo and it really helped us. And I'm sure it will help you guys. There are a lot of projects that will be given to you, especially for minor classes. And my tip would always be, or my advice would always be, do the projects first. Because you can cram studying, but you cannot cram a project. Listo biya magayin mo og scrapbook, then ani mo makram ang scrapbook, pero ang pagtoon, daghang pa notes, daghang pa reviewers, daghang pa flashcards, plus you have your friends to tell you the things that are important. So, muna, once a project is given, do it right away because doing a project takes like, what, 1 hour, 30 minutes, 2 hours, but then your studying will take 4 hours, 5 hours, and the more nga imo na ipagpaliban ang project, the more magu siya madugay niya, the more, the more ka ma-stress ba, murag, ah, why didn't I do this earlier, niya, mag-cram ka, niya, mabati, niya, mas mabati na sa limuhang project, mabati pag yun mo grado, so, you know, if you can, do your projects first 
and then you can study later on. Next, this is something that I really do no matter what other people say. I always ask what type of exam to expect. Why? Why is this important to do? Because knowing what type of exam that will come out, you can adjust your study habits. So for example, multiple choice and exam. When you're reviewing or when you're studying, you kind of wire your brain to think of the possible choices in any question. Unsa man ang mga choices na pwede ka matrick. Or if it's like the teacher will say true or false, then your studying will really change. You'll focus more on reading sentences, on the kanang tense, ang kanang mga end or, ang kanang mga na. For example, also, if matching type, your brain will also have to study that way na. Ah, okay. Matching, matching. Kana, kagets mo. So, knowing what type of exam will come out and asking that beforehand, it will really help you in making your studying more efficient and more time saving. Because you don't want to spend so many hours studying tapos di di ay magawasan yung mong ipang tunan. So make sure to work efficiently. A lot of our seniors would tell us good not to work hard but to work smart. So if you're looking for being healthy in college, both mentally and physically, then you always have to set aside time to de-stress. And for me, I usually assign Saturday as my non-study day. Saturday, di ko ni mahilab na na. Di ko maghimo na o project, di ko magtuon na Saturday. Because Monday to Friday, I'm already studying so much. I'm already using my brain so much. Saturday will be my only time. And for you, you can set aside a certain day or a certain hour man lang of a day for you to de-stress and declutter your mind. And how do you do that? You do, you know, your hobbies, you do your passion. If it's writing, you write. If it's doing art, you make art. If it's just even browsing through YouTube, then do it. Basta always make sure nga kanang dili gani ka ma burn out dili makapoy mo ang brain kay if makapoy mong brain way gamit ta na nimo efforts so make sure that healthy imong brain healthy mo mental state and that you are coping well with all the stress that will be coming at you so that is it for my practical advices practical tips um, i know this you know i know there are a lot of youtube videos about this already but these are the tips that are very real sa ako ah, and that I've learned it through experience and the class and my classmates experience as well. So if this was helpful to you, then give this video a thumbs up and you can always click the subscribe button to see more of my videos. And then comment down below what you want to see next and if you have any other questions related to other things. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.